Hi, I'm Barry Jones. I've, um, I've been a photo lens-based artist for many years. Uh, I've just recently retired from about a 40-year career of teaching, university-level uh, fine arts students, visual arts students, uh, always in the areas of photography. Um, I'm primarily, a, over the years, have worked with still photography, uh, film for many years, and more recently digital. Uh, and lately I've moved into the area of um, what I call uh, video portraiture or durational video works. How, how I begin projects, I mean, th there's, there's no real um, beginning to a project. They, they tend to flow uh, one project fees and flows into another and evolves. Uh, I have been, you know, interested in portraiture and uh, in a very, very broad sense in the way that I'm interested in people, what they look like, what they do, what they look like when they're doing certain things. And over the years, I've circled back on that idea and explored it in slightly different ways over uh, many decades. Uh, this particular project is, uh, uh, you know, the the uh, culmination. It's 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 what I'm working on uh, right now, of course, and was my um, interest in moving away from the still image into an animated image, uh, but still with an eye to uh, still photography and some of the and still photography portraiture more specifically and some of the concerns around that. Well, the, the title for the, for the exhibition, Look, Don't Look, reflects um, uh, the idea that's, that's in each video in which I uh, give instructions, uh, live instructions as the camera's rolling to uh, my subjects. Uh, or I give them certain circumstances that they have to cope with as the filming is going on. So there is meant to, the, the title is meant to indicate um, a somewhat authoritative um, ordering um, and an exchange, um, almost a, a, a command and compliance exchange between the subject and the artist to explore that area. And part of my intention in doing that was to um, allow the subjects or, or to cause the subjects to um, step outside themselves. If, if uh, in, in a typical, in a uh, sort of traditional portrait situation, the subject is, is uh, seated in front of the camera, in front of the artist who's painting them or something, and they you know, try and project a certain persona. Uh, and this, uh, a lot of my strategies are meant to uh, try and upset that um, and in doing so uh, cause other things to be more evident from the subject. So uh, the, um, the subjects were, were in, invited to come, they had to come to my studio and I, typically they would ask, you know, what should I wear, how should I dress, what should I look like, and I usually just um, uh, my, my directions were purposely vague and, and not very strong in that regard that they could wear what they liked, uh, come and be comfortable, uh, and I sort of evaded giving them any, any specific direction. The specific directions came later. Um, so um, in most of the videos, uh, I'm giving ongoing instruction. Uh, that sound is stripped out of out of the finished product. I'd, I'd like them to be silent because in a way I do think of them as being pictures, silent pictures. Uh, only in the crying video was there sound which the subjects made. It's also stripped out, but some of them, you know, vocalized to work themselves into that state. But in all the other uh, videos, uh, screaming for example, uh, they were instructed to do that as a pantomime they weren't to make any noise um, so that um, what you see is you know close to the, ex the experience of the moment. It's not like there was a, a loud scream there that was taken out. They were they had to try and express that just through body um, body movement and 
and uh, mus muscle you know control uh, and there was no heavy breathing or or screaming or anything that that was um, allowed to happen so um, I, I did give it instructions throughout and their only instructions were to you know address the camera and follow my directions they knew roughly uh, you know, that it would be for a, each shoot would be for a minute and a half and that they were going to be invited to scream or smile and I um, uh, I just directed them uh, from from off camera. Yes, uh, well, you know, I, I, I'm influenced and feel like I'm part of ongoing art, art history, so, uh, you know, there's various um, artists that had a big influence on me. Um, you know, August Sandor, uh, famous German portraitist at the turn of the century, um, um, Andy Warhol, of course, uh, Thomas Roof with his, his uh, uh, very, very objective, uh, blank-faced portraits of people. Uh, and I tried to take some of these ideas and react a little bit against them. Uh, some years ago, I started seeing video um, presented in a frame in a gallery as, as if it was like an animated photograph. And um, a number of works that I saw seemed to be uh, uh, too subtle for my liking. You know, you would watch a face and maybe the eyes would blink and you go, oh, look, it, it moved, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So I thought if I'm going to embrace the idea of, of movement somehow within a still photography, I'm really going to embrace it. So. Um, in the couples projects, for example, and in a uh, solo portrait project, which doesn't appear in this exhibition, uh, I arrange the studio such that these subjects are, um, how should I put it, uh, they, they have to move. They're, they're placed in a situation which um, doesn't allow them to sort of stand or sit comfortably still they're constantly challenged to uh, keep themselves composed in front of the camera. Um, and the result, to my mind, is a little bit, looks a little bit like a time-lapse camera where you could imagine if someone stood in, still in front of a camera for an hour and then you played it back and sped it up, it would actually be quite, it would actually, there would actually be a lot of movement in it. But I wanted that to happen in real time. Uh, and I think it has that feel that it's, it's a bit um, um, quirky and unreal, the movement. Um, and it, but it does create, I think, a, a somewhat um, a mesmerizing uh, kind of effect to watch uh, these people uh, kind of swaying and correcting and moving uh, in, in a, a seemingly sped up kind of way. First of all, I, I, think, I think there's... Uh, I think there's humor in this exhibition. Uh, there's, there's meant to be. We're aware the whole time, hopefully, when we're looking at these, that it's all staged. So it's partly the, or to a good extent, a great extent, it's about the seeming contradiction between what is real and what's authentic and what is clearly staged. I mean, the circumstances are obvious, the person's sitting, there's a colored, or standing, there's a colored background, they're addressing the camera. This is not, sh you know, shot surreptitiously. On the other hand, there seems to be real emotion expressed. So it's, it's partly that um, contradiction between, uh, or poses the question, you know, what's real, what's faked is, uh, are, are tears the actual indicator of crying, or is crying some other sort of state? Or can you, cry, can you have tears and not really be crying? Um, I think another thing about these is that um, there's a sort of an intensity of, of the way the subjects address the camera. And I like to um, think of it as a bit like how each of us, uh, uh, I think most of us anyway, address the, a mirror ourselves, perhaps in the morning when we're composing ourselves to go out and we're brushing our teeth and we're looking in the mirror and we're examining ourselves, perhaps making a face, uh, you know, uh, putting on makeup or, or brushing our hair or imagining what we look like to someone else. Um, and so 
you know, we're, al we're almost allowed to sort of um, examine these people as if we're looking at them through a two-way mirror. Uh, and it, it, it gives us a, a sort of an unsettling uh, kind of insight to see people who might be, you know, mugging, doing their best smile to see if their teeth are white or making a face to see what they look like if they look miserable. And we get to see them sort of acting out for themselves. Um, but, but we see it as, as a viewer, sort of an insight into this sort of intimate personal moment. 